There are five scenarios here. The first scenario is a car stopped at a stoplight. So we will go ahead and represent it with these three graphs here, position versus time, velocity versus time, and acceleration versus time. We don't know where the car stopped, so we're gonna make some assumptions here. Let's just assume that uh, based on a reference point, the car is stopped um, about two meters in front, of it, uh, in front of it on the positive side. So we'll say a car represents this line right here, stopped at a stoplight, so therefore its position remains unchanged. If its position remains unchanged versus time, then the velocity being delta x over delta t is going to be zero. That's because it doesn't change its position, right? So its velocity is gonna effectively be zero. If the velocity stays at zero, it means it doesn't change. The change in velocity over the change in time is acceleration. So if its velocity stays at zero, acceleration stays at zero the whole time. For the second problem, we have a hockey puck sliding forward on ultra smooth ice. So we don't know what forward means, but we'll assume that just means in a positive direction. So a hockey puck slides forward on ultra smooth ice means that the hockey puck will have a constant velocity um, going in the positive direction. So one thing we know is that the position of the hockey puck will increase as time goes on. But since it's a constant velocity the whole time, then based on wherever the heck it starts, which we don't know where it does, we'll just say it starts here. It's just going to go up at an angle. And the angle of that slope is going to be based on how fast it's going. Obviously, the faster it's going, the higher the angle since the position changes more versus every second that comes about. And if it goes slower, then the, uh, then the line will be a little bit more uh, horizontal. That being the case, you can either say velocity being the change in time, change in time being linear and constant, velocity must just be a constant line. Or you could just look at the situation, you have a hockey puck going at a constant velocity, which means you have one value for velocity versus time the whole way. So you can either you know, find out what velocity is just from a position graph, or you could just look back at the situation at hand. Acceleration, we can find out from velocity. Since acceleration, there uh, is a change in velocity over the change in time. Velocity is not changing, so acceleration has to be zero. You can also say, well, since the hockey puck is sliding without any sort of force or acceleration acting on it, well, then great, there's no acceleration, so it's gonna remain at zero. For the third problem, a hockey puck sliding backward on ultra smooth ice is gonna be roughly the same situation, except since it's going backwards, it's going in a negative direction. That means that wherever the, pocky, uh, the hockey puck starts, which we'll just say it starts right here, it's gonna be sliding this way. We don't know where it starts, so we're just gonna make a guess. And as long as we're going slanted down, we are correct, technically. If the hockey puck is sliding backwards, we know that the velocity is gonna be a negative. You can either just say, well, I got that from the hockey puck sliding backwards at a constant speed, or you can say, well, since this is a negative slope, the velocity has to be a negative horizontal line. Remember, the velocity is the change in position over time. The position is changing by going down every second. So the velocity is gonna be a negative because of that negative change in position. Acceleration is the change in velocity, but the velocity doesn't change. So acceleration remains at zero. Number four, a ball is being dropped toward the ground from rest. Okay, so we know that the ball is gonna, con is gonna first be at rest and is gonna get faster and faster as it goes down to the ground. So for position, we'll say that the ball starts off here, any arbitrary point doesn't matter, that the position is not gonna change very much for the first few seconds or maybe for the first few <laughs> milliseconds. But then the ball is gonna increase speed, which means it's gonna increase its angle down, you know, uh, to change the position versus time every second since the ball is accelerating down. So this is what the ball's graph is gonna, uh, gonna look like as a position versus time graph. Now for velocity, we know that velocity is getting bigger and bigger versus time, but since the ball is dropping downward, it's a negative. So we see that the velocity is going to first start off at zero because the ball was at rest. 
and is going to get bigger and bigger in the negative direction as time goes on. So this is figuring out what velocity is on a situational front, but how to figure out velocity from this is just as easy. You see that in the beginning, the part of this graph at least, the slope is very horizontal, but nearing the end, the slope goes more vertical and vertical. So the change in position is very low from the first few instances in time, but then the changes get gradually greater. So therefore the velocity needs to get gradually greater and it goes in the negative direction because the change gets more negative, uh, I guess gets more quicker <laughs> in the negative sense. So that means the change becomes more negative and negative faster and faster. So this has to be negative and, and, going, and going high, uh, lower in the uh, axis. Since acceleration is the change in velocity over time, well, first of all, we can say anything being dropped on Earth is going to have an acceleration of negative 9.8 meters a second squared. So you could just say, hey, this is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. But if you want to base it on the graph, since this graph is changing, but it's changing the same rate the whole time in a negative direction, then acceleration is going to be a negative because of that constant change of the velocity. And it's going to be horizontal because that change doesn't accelerate, so to speak. A ball is being thrown up and come back down, or in coming back down toward the ground. So the ball goes up and comes back down under the influence of gravity. Well, let's just say this is the ground. If the ball goes up, that means somebody threw it up. So the change in position is going to be really high from the get-go because somebody just threw it up. It's going fast in the beginning. It's going to reach the top and it's going to come back down the same way it went back up or went up. So the graph is actually going to look more like this. Okay. It's going to look like this, but with the front half included since somebody's throwing the ball up first. The velocity is going to first be positive because it's a positive change, but the positive change versus time is going to go down to a zero since at this point, there's no change whatsoever. So the velocity is going to start up high like this, is going to then go lower and lower until it hits zero. It will correspond at zero to right here when it's at the top, and then it's going to go down like this. Cool. So we have this velocity being a constant uh, slope because of this constant change from positive to zero to negative. At the same time, we go to acceleration. Acceleration is the change in velocity over time. So since the acceleration, we already know acceleration is going to be negative 9.8, so we already have that. But why is it? It's because this thing is changing constantly in a negative direction, just like this did. You see how it looks the same? The only thing is that it's offset because the ball first went upward. So the acceleration graph looked like that.